Hello everybody! Welcome back to another NACLO video. Today we'll be doing a problem from 2021 round one and it's titled junk mail letters we don't need. I believe this was the second problem in the round so it was pretty early on. Um, as some background information for New Watchers, NACLO stands for the North American Computational Linguistics Open Competition. Um, there are two rounds to the competition, so anyone can compete in the first round, and the top 10% of um, contestants in the first round become semifinalists and get to compete in the Invitational round, which is round two. If you do well enough in that, then you'll be selected to compete in the International Linguistics Olympiad, which is one of the 12 official Olympiads out there that people can compete in. Uh, so cool, let's get right on with this problem, which is 10 points. Recently, a group of researchers decided that the alphabet had too many letters. Okay, interesting take. The letters could not fit conveniently on cell phone keyboards because there were too many options when filling in crosswords and children were wasting time chanting all 26 letters in the alphabet song, ha ha. Okay, so luckily the researchers noticed that many letters were unnecessary. For example, P and B. So P and B sound a lot alike. So they decided to replace every P with a B while every B remained unchanged. For example, plug would be rewritten plug, but bug would stay written as bug. Okay, cool. They continued this process until they narrowed down the alphabet to just nine letters. And this writing system was named Do Old Bud. <laughs> and the media went wild. Uh, and here's one of the headlines that ran that day. Okay. Words, wool, booze, blood, bleh. And then the article ended with this huge uh, mess. And now the problem wants us to first rewrite all of these words over here in this new alphabet. And then it also has us answer some questions. All right, great, great. So how do we begin with this problem? Well, it does give us a clue. So notice how they were like P and B, P and B sound very alike. Um, and plug, we were rewritten as plug. And when I think of P or B, I think, um, if you just think about the placement of your mouth, right? Or like the placement of your lips, um, like making the p and the b, you both do like a smacking with your lips that is like quite similar. The only difference is like p is like soundless versus b has a sound. Um, I'm sure, or I'm pretty sure there is like an official linguistic term for this. I am not a linguistic major, so I don't know what the term for uh, sound versus soundless is, but this is what I noticed. So they changed, for example, all the p sounds to the b sounds because they were kind of similar. And if you think about the English alphabet, before we even dive into this problem, um, some other words that kind of have similar correlations, let's think of like g and k. For example, try saying k in your mouth or k slash c, like k. And then try saying g in your mouth, like the k and the g, like notice that your tongue placement is pretty much in the same place. The only difference is whether you're like making a sound with your throat or not. And so perhaps like this might be some kind of correspondence that could be useful. Um, some other ones that pop into my head right away are f, like f and then v, which is v and t and d, so t and d. So just writing these correspondences down at first. Great, all right. And so now, let's see. We want to turn all of this into something that we can actually read. And then now we have to um, go back and forth between this new alphabet and the English alphabet. Well, I guess one observation that I make right away words just seems like words right like just intuitively if you spoke it like w w r d z sounds a lot like just words and over here i can already see like 
the s and the z, indeed, they have a correspondence. I suppose all s's turn into z's in this case, and that also matches, right? Just make the s sound and the z sound in your mouth. Notice how your mouth does the same exact shape. It's just whether there's like a sound or not. And so that's pretty cool. Uh, something else I noticed, the, U, the O got turned into a U. The R stayed the same. And that's about it. So words will boo something. Will and will are pretty similar, right? Like words will. And if I'm logically just thinking about this in terms of like a sentence, words will be. Okay, let's assume that is correct. What do I notice already? Look at the um, vowels. Pretty much every vowel is literally uh, U. No matter whether it's E or O or I, it seems to always be transformed into this U in our new alphabet. So... I can already also make an assumption that any vowel, right? So like A, E, I, O, U, they all just turn into U. And that might be helpful. Um, and I suppose the rest of this problem really is just a matter of trying to identify what this alphabet, which seems to be phonetic or like it seems to be related to like the sounds you make rather than like the English alphabetized letters we're just gonna see how we can like kind of match them um and so yeah if you want to get started with this problem using these hints that's great uh go ahead fast forward the video otherwise I'm just gonna go right into it and see what I can derive um let's see where should we start so we want to find words like the, and I'm pretty sure the is pretty simple. Can we find anything that looks remotely like the? Um, I actually can't in this wall of letters. I see the single U. I assume it's A, because usually A stands alone. Um, I see this U, V. So notice um, previous observation I made, right? There's F and there's V. UV doesn't make sense, but if I turn this V into an F and this U into an O, then of would make sense. Um, butter. Butter. There, butter doesn't really make sense, but better might make sense. Like the T's, if the T's turn into D's, and we know that the U can pretty much be any vowel. So if this was better... Um, this er might be or, and if this v is still f, and that's r, then this u is probably or. So something better or for. If you turn this into a v into an f again, this u and this is an r, so this u is probably o. So for better or for, and then uh so far as you can see from here like w seems to stay the same so i'll just keep w there for now this is r z um if we notice in our correspondence here like s and z are changed so let's say this was an s and we know u and u can be anything right so i think this would make sense to be worse so for better or for worse do drew something 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 <laughs> okay so wool is probably will boogoo makes no sense i have no idea what that means um words will be uh i just uh sorry i made a jump here i just look back at this words will be zbold zbold you know what that sounds like to me and what i'm noticing see there's two l's here and let's assume that L doesn't change, right? And then Zbl is like, if we use our correspondences, um, like P and B, right? Spelled sounds like spelled, right? So this could be spelled. Words will be spelled. And two things here and another two things here, huh? 
Well, the V's, let's assume they were F's, right? D and then some vowel here. This looks awfully like the word different. If you just think about it, right? Without even considering. Like what other English word has two F's? Pretty much none. So let's try replacing this. Words will be spelled differently and see what happens. D I F F E R E N T L Y. Okay. If this is indeed correct, then I make two observations. Notice the U and the Y. It seems like in this language they consider Y to be an alphabet or a vowel too, which makes sense. And also, it seems like D. Oops. It seems like D also got turned into N. Um, oops, that's the wrong place. D also got turned into N. And so that's interesting. It might be important to note. So the D could be T. It could also be N. Okay, great. So words will be spelled differently. Bugoos. 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 Well, we know that the U can be any vowel, right? And we also know that the K and the G sounds are kind of interchangeable in this kind of alphabet. So let's, G doesn't make sense in this context, but let's say this was B and this was C and Z was S, right? Because of our correspondence here. So because, right? This, this, this looks awful like because and all the vowels match too. So words will be spelled differently because of do, do all the bed. Ubabood, right? But like this U, again, we know that it can be any, um, any kind of, what's the word? Vowel, L and B slash P. And then this is B and then D can be T. This looks kind of like the word alphabet. And that would make sense, right? Because it is indeed an alphabet, just a different alphabet. So let's fill this in and see what happens. Al bet and so I noticed something else very interesting here already if you look at the word alphabet it's the the ph sound right gets replaced with just the b and the ph sound is the same sound as f right so maybe ph f alphabet all of them just get replaced with a b and that would make sense right because this language really simplifies things a lot cool so looking at B1, I can already see we can pretty much replace some of these words already. Uh, we already figured out at the very beginning that words over here is spelled as W-U-R-D-Z. Um, is there anything else? I suppose one thing I do notice. So there's a this word, right? What is dual? Well, we just found out that this D, it seems to not just represent like T, but it seems to also be able to represent N. And so let's, let's see what happens if we replace this with N, right? N, W, something alphabet, right? And U can be any vowel. So it makes sense that this would be new, right? So words will be spelled differently because of quote, new alphabet. Okay, that makes sense. That's great. We at least know that much. Now let's get to this actual world text. Do. I see do here. Do. I see do again. Do slash. Do could also be duh, right? Like, of course, there's no H here, right? But if you think about it, it's like duh. That makes the most sense, right? Because then we would have this be E. And then D, D would be like t, right? T-H. It's basically like the same thing as D, but like your tongue is a little bit more out and there isn't like a sound to it. But if we assume that this is the, then we also have the answer to this problem. So we write that there. And whenever I see something like W in this vowel, we can make um, kind of an assumption that this is we, because that would make the most sense. Um, and everything else still looks a little bit hard, so we're just going to have to go slowly. Let's see, we, we want to be able to find something like fifth. Oops. 
And in fact, we've already kind of determined how to spell fifth. Uh, before we actually spell fifth out, something else I just wanted to quickly note. It seems like for most of the cases, like the number of words in our new alphabet, or sorry, the number of letters in our new alphabet corresponds pretty damn well with like each letter in the old alphabet. And so notice how like, see words in do obubud or um, new alphabet has five letters. Words in the English alphabet also has five letters. The only exception I see so far is this alphabet right over here. But that's because the PH got condensed to just B. And so we can probably assume safely that most of these kinds of um, transcriptions between the alphabet and the English alphabet are going to be like letter to letter and pretty, pretty like one to one. Um, and so F we determined in our new alphabet is just V. So we can write that as V. We know that every time we see a vowel, it's just U. So we write U and F is V again. And we actually did just figure out TH. Um, I didn't write it down, but if you look at the word the right over here, um, notice how the D represents the TH sound. So we just have to do D and we have that down. Great.